Hi, and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, just a very short intro video to this series of three videos that were required in order to crack today's uh, diabolical uh, Sudoku from the Daily Telegraph. Um, just to explain what's going on, normally I would just present my solve in one video, but today it took uh, longer than I uh, I expected and there are a lot of difficult techniques so the first video just goes through the basics um, you know it shows how to get to make a good start on these puzzles how to have good technique um, you know how to get yourself into a position to solve the really hard bits of it second video um, there's some Y wings in there there's a new technique that I don't think we've uh, covered on the channel before which is something called an empty rectangle uh, and that's quite interesting and then the third video um, in, we need to use a fin swordfish or eyelid anyway. I mean, there may be easier ways of solving this puzzle. I'd really welcome some feedback uh, for those of you who who have already solved it, who may have found a more efficient way. Um, so, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy the videos. Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where on the screen you can see the um, diabolical Sudoku from Friday's edition of Daily Telegraph. As usual, we're going to try and solve it. Um, so we'll start using standard technique, which um, those of you familiar with the channel will know is to uh, allow ourselves pencil marks where a number can only go in exactly two positions within a three by three block. Um, so I'm trying to just uh, spot a simple example of that to show you now. Uh, threes, for example, in this block you can see can only go in these two positions so we would allow ourselves to pencil mark those um, and see we can make a, a start with some of the big numbers here and uh, we can pencil mark fours in this block so that means that four can only go in those two positions in this three by three block and what else can we do two can only go here look Six. This has to be a six. Again, simple Sudoku rules at the start. This is very common. We can normally get off these puzzles. You know, it's not like we won't be able to put any numbers in at all. We can normally put in quite a few numbers to start the process. It's what happens at the end that gets a little bit more difficult. This square here has to be a two. Interaction of this two here and this two here allows us to place a two in there, which is nice see now what have we got left to place here three and a four into these two positions so in fact this would have to be this way around and that gives us a three here just again simple sudoku rules this three this three is pointing to a three um, in column four here at the bottom uh, okay so now you can see we can immediately place the one as well because of this one and now the ones in the central 3x3 block are forced over again into column 4 and this one here resolves the position there that's going to have to go there like that which means this must be a 7 so actually we're off to a flyer here which always worries me I always think with these puzzles that the easier the initial steps are the uh, more vicious the sting in the tail tends to be you can pencil mark 8s and 9s in here to complete this column and that means that we must be placing four into those two positions and we can resolve that with this four. So let's do that. Let's mark some. Well, actually, we can resolve this, this square here now has to be a four. And this square here has to be a four. I think we may have actually filled in all of the fours now. Six, six. And pencil mark sixes into those two positions. Okay. And here at the bottom we need sevens and eights to complete this non -et. So we'll pencil mark those. I would certainly take a look now at uh, row eight because it's got so many given numbers in it. You can see we need the numbers one, three and eight. But actually even though we have a three here and a one here can't quite see how to complete row 8 at this stage. We'll come back to it later. 
can see we can place a big two up here. Simple Sudoku rules again. Pencil marks and twos into those two positions. Very few nines in the grid. In fact, if you look at the shoots on the left and right hand side, you can see very few eights and nines. Right, what is the next number? Six, 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 seven, seven, seven. Okay, we can find a seven here. And that's going to give us a seven here, a seven here, and an eight here. So that's nice. I think that means the sevens are done too now. So we've done the fours, we've done the sevens. Pencil mark twos into these two positions. Um, yeah, and we can place a one into this position here because of the one here and the one here. Let's put that in. Pencil mark one. Oops. Pencil mark ones over on the right hand side in this block. Ah, now this six here, I think I should have, would have been able to spot that earlier had I not been. So this is an eight or a nine here. Let's try to see whether or not we can use that fact. I can't quite see how at this point. I certainly look now at column two. You see we need three, eight and nine into the open cells here. And we have one of each of those numbers in the respective rows. But I don't think we can quite resolve. So this for example would be an 8 or a 9, this would be a 3 or an 8, this would be a 3 or a 9, but we don't have a way of distinguishing which of those is correct at this point. Let's just check row 9 of the grid. Again 5, 8, 9, this seems to be the common difficulty. And 3, 8, 9 across the top is going to be the same problem. So this is not this is probably about as far as we can get with our pencil marks. There may be one or two pencil marks I missed, but I've missed, but I doubt there's too many more. Um, threes there. Oh, so there's maybe threes up there. Look, the interaction of this three here and this three here. So that forces the threes in those two positions there. You can see we're not seeing much correspondence between the threes in row 2 and the 3's in row 5. Ideally what we're looking for with these pencil marks is if we can find pencil marks that are aligned in the same rows um, or the same columns. So if for example maybe we were able to pencil mark that sort of thing into this 3x3 three three block that would be very helpful because the 3 here uh, would form an x-wing and that would eliminate the option for the 3 here. But you can see looking at this bottom block can't do that. The uh, can't quite force the threes into the right place in order to uh, utilize that sort of logic. Uh, 